California lawmaker now calling for a full audit of that state's child protection services after the agency helped police take a five-month-old baby boy from his parents after they told a hospital that was treating their child they wanted a second opinion on his medical condition and the diagnosis that he needed surgery. They took him from the hospital against medical advice and they didn't take him home, they took him to another hospital. And that hospital said, okay, fine, you can go back home with him now. We'll schedule a surgery later. The next day, the police and Division of Child and Family Services showed up at their house and now this lawmaker and others are very unhappy and a lawsuit is coming. Here's, let us take you back to the day the police and DCF arrived at this mother and father and baby's house. Really? She wasn't rational? To all the moms out there, would you, would you have been more rational if they were taking your baby out of your hands? I think she was pretty calm. Tim Donnelly is the California Assemblyman looking into this case, and Joe Weinberger is an attorney for baby Sammy's mother, Anna, who joined me on the program on Monday and told us that they're getting ready to sue. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I, let me just start with you on it, Joe, again, because... We have so much feedback from our viewers who are so outraged as they watch that tape and say, do it, sue, sue whoever you can sue, so this doesn't happen to another family. But let's get specific. Who really is to blame for, because they went to the other hospital, they went from Sutter to Kaiser, the Kaiser doctor said, you're good, these are good parents, they can take their baby. And the police knew that from, from, from Kaiser Hospital, so they took their baby home. But then the next day, different police show up at their house with DCF and grab their child. So how did that happen? I'd like to think that it's just a failure to communicate, but the reality is this is something that happens far too frequently. CPS oversteps its bounds, tries to protect its image more than the people they're, they're charged with the care and custody of, and they rip children off from their parents all the time. Before I bring in the assemblyman, your, your thoughts on that, the way that social worker tried to dismiss Anna who is only asking where they were. She didn't know these cops were about to show up and grab her child, her sick child, and take him away from her. Only asking them what hospital they were going to take him to, and she refused. She refused to tell her because she said Anna was being irrational. Irrational? I got to say that if that was me, I couldn't have nearly been that calm. Stealing a baby, taking him away without documentation, and not even saying, here's where we're going. What the video doesn't show is after this, Anna went from hospital to hospital searching for her child, and when she got to Sutter Memorial, they said the child wasn't there, when in fact he was. This is unbelievable. Assemblyman Donnelly, I mean, I know you're outraged over this, and you've been asking questions. This is the quote I, I read of you. You started contacting officials at Sutter, uh, officials at CPS. You said, are these parents abusive? They said, no. You said, quote, then what the hell are you doing? Yeah, I, I mean, what's the crime here, uh, Megan? That, that's really the question. And, and the other part is, what, you know, what, who's really in charge of your health care? This, if this mother committed any crime, it's caring about her child too much. And when she got uncomfortable with the direction the health care was going, she intervened because she, did, she said, you know, I, did, I didn't want to get to that point where they, they perform a rushed open heart surgery when they're not even sure if he has the flu or, or where his temperature came from. They were administering drugs, and the doctor said that those weren't even authorized to be administered. The nurse didn't know why she was administering them. The, the mother is the only rational figure here, and so I'm demanding answers from CPS and because they're a government agency, and you saw the way that, that, uh, that social worker acted. She, she, it's as if she's the judge, uh, jury, and executioner. Right. And not to mention the police officer who says, she says, do you have papers to justify what you're about to do and take my baby? He says, yeah, here, go ahead and read them. 
And then he says, hurry up, you're delaying. It's, it's crossing over into resisting arrest. With his hand on his weapon. I mean, this, you, this you cannot happen amazing? in modern-day America. You've got a, an immigrant family that came here from Russia, and, and, and that's, what you, that's, that's what they fled from. They fled from a government where the knock on the door meant that, that something bad happened, that somebody maybe didn't come home, somebody disappeared. And, and she was very calm. She documented it because she's skeptical of the police. Mm -hmm. What this has done is really opened up a door into an agency, CPS, which is Child Protective Services. They're under the Department of Health and Human Services here in California. That is completely unaccountable. They, they, they silence anybody that, that tries to resist by saying, hey, we're going to take away your child. Right, the, the biggest threat you can level. That you saw it on camera. Yeah, the biggest threat you can level at somebody. And, Joe, that's a question I want to ask you. So DCF really had no business uh, in this case taking this, this child. And I know that you, you went into court and, and made that case. But now, pursuant to that agreement that they were out and the, and, the, and the parents could have this baby back and, of course, be responsible for his care, as they have been for five months, now, now DCF gets oversight over them. They, have, they get to go and monitor these parents to decide whether they're doing their job right. What gives them the right? Why, why do they get any ongoing role in this parent and this family whatsoever? Well, I think in this situation, this is simply the court looking out for the best interests of the child and not wanting to take any chances so that there isn't any bad press. Our hope is that in 30 days we'll have this hearing and CPS will walk away. They'll understand that they clearly jumped the ball. They went too far. They've made a mistake, and they will walk away. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming, I, some some of the Assemblyman, news. that there are many, many families that actually do need uh -oh. CPS in California and need their oversight and their intervention, and that the good people of California will realize this does not appear to be one of those families. Megan, this is such a clear-cut case. The real, the real heart of this matter is why, why was CPS, what was the genesis of that second contact where the police came to their house after it had already been clear they had gone to another hospital for a second opinion? CPS should have never been involved at that point. What I'm getting is hundreds and hundreds of stories from individuals who are saying, this happened to me and my child's been taken away, can you help me? So we're going to conduct an audit. There's going to be a hearing on June 5th to determine whether the Joint Legislative Audit Committee will approve the audit. From yeah, they'll take and, it from there. And I the want to tell our viewers, the doctor at Kaiser said clearly uh, that I have no concern for the safety of this child at home with the parents. They're competent. They're concerned with his best care. It's fine. He can go home. And, that, and the day after that happened, they showed up. Gentlemen, thank you both. Coming Megan, up. If I could